Howdy folks, Charlie here from Christmas on Crestline. Thanks for tuning in to this year's Behind the Scenes Tour. Decided to do it in season this year instead of after like I've done in years past. I always did it in January or February, but decided to do it this year in season. If you're a long time fan of the show, some of the stuff you've seen before. If you're a new subscriber to the show, hey, Thanks for subscribing, appreciate that about you. Everything's gonna be new to you because you're a new subscriber. Uh, stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm gonna show you some videos sent in from an award-winning show. Uh, every year we do a fan appreciation award of which you too can enter. All I need is take a picture or take a video of your Christmas light display or your Christmas tree or something. Send it to me at christmasoncrestline at gmail.com. We do compile year-round video. So if you decorate for 4th of July, Memorial Day, St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, send it to us all year long. We'll use your video in a, in a new video like we're going to do for MS Lights today. Uh, Mike and Stacy sent us in video. They're an award-winning show. And that automatically gets them entered into this year's Fan Appreciation Award where you get to win a trophy, you get to win merch, a bunch of neat stuff. So send me your pictures, send me your videos to christmasoncrestline at gmail.com and we'll get you entered into this year's contest. Let me know down in the comments what questions you have, what was your favorite prop that you saw today, what questions do you have about what I do. If there's something you're more interested in in one of our props than the others, hover over the timeline and that will take you to uh, different props. That way you can kind of zip right to that and you don't have to hear me talking about a prop you're not even interested in. You can jump right to that. So behind me, first things first, this big gigantic tour, this seven and a half foot tall uh, rocket ship of lights, or as my neighbor called it, a Dr. Pepper bottle. So this here is actually uh, two tomato cages. It's a traditional smaller tomato cage on top and turned upside down. And the base of it is actually the concrete rebar, the concrete wire mesh that they lay to, to hang concrete or to pour concrete. And we use those for our tomato cages and we just, it's, it's stronger, it's more durable and we enjoy growing with them. So I use that as the base and then I turned a smaller tomato cage upside down, I zip tied that nice and tight to the, the lower base and hung lights on it. And these are uh, G60 or G40 lights that we hung on here. And the G kind of, you can remember those, kind of stands for globe lights. Uh, but that's what this bad boy is. I wanted something over the well because I, I was debating whether or not I wanted to decorate the well, make it look like a candy cane or something. But my wife, Jean, she said she wanted tomato cages this year as runners. We replace those with our, we do uh, giant Christmas light balls. If you're curious on how to build those, I'll leave a link be lots of links in this video, but I'll leave a link on how to build those. We actually took those out of this year's show and instead did traditional tomato cage. Tomato cage props are not unusual to the Christmas light uh, space, to the Christmas designers, the hobbyists, like what we do for our computerized cr Christmas light show. They're not uh, new, but they are new to our show. So we did add them this year. Uh, each little tomato cage here has, I think, 200 lights. Uh, this Dr. Pepper bottle, rocket ship of lights behind me, I want to say it has 2,000, but I don't quite remember what I put on there. All right, you can see here we did new runners for this year's show. These are candy canes, folks, and they are simply from the dollar store. We paid $1.25 for each candy cane. They did come with lights already built into them. We just disabled those lights, and in some of them, we actually have uh, a piece of rebar uh, up inside of them and then to hold them down as a stake. Others, we have a stake next to some... No, I take it back, we did not do that. We did it with quick light posts quick light post. Some of them do have rebar in it because I broke the uh, hooks. It does come with uh, a stake to go down to the ground. I snapped those off a couple times trying to bend them into the right shape. They're plastic. They don't really bend. So I broke a couple of them. But the uh, the quick post guides is actually what uh, we are using uh, to secure them in an upright position. We have them facing with the candy cane uh, hook going to one end of the street and they act as runners. They all have their own independent channel. Uh, we did an RGB theme, so it starts out red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, and it repeats that pattern all the way for 28 times. Actually, do I have white on here? I do have white, so it's RGBW, red, green, blue, white. I forgot, RGBW, and it repeats itself, uh, so there's 28, and uh, it goes like that. It's kind of neat. It gives, uh, we wanted something to make the show kind of more three-dimensional, so this is up towards the audience. Uh, we have a matching vertical, which I'll show you here in a second, that is back behind. So it kind of, they mirror each other in very, in different parts of the show, they'll mirror each other. So it gives some 3D depth to the show for the viewer to see. Kind of neat. All right, here are my verticals. Some are old, some are brand new, but they're all dear to my heart. This is actually my favorite prop that I have because it's so easy to do. 
These are simply two by fours mounted onto my fascia with a C bracket and they're wrapped in lights. Uh, when I first built these, I hung a ton of lights. Some of these are 14 feet tall and I put 1,500, 1,600, 2,000 lights on them. Now, I've learned since then that you don't need that many lights. I've come up with a, a new way to do it this year, kind of how to wrap them in a, in a crisscross zigzag pattern. So some of these only have 300 lights on them and it's they're every bit as useful as the ones that still have a thousand or more on them. So my original ones down here behind me, I didn't add any new lights or take away lights. All these behind you actually are brand new to this portion of the show. There used to be a big old fire bush here, which was awesome. But it, I thought the, the wall could be better used without the bush here. We took the verticals and we now have 24 verticals here all strung up nice and neat together. Uh, if we ever go to a pixel light show, this will be a giant matrix on this wall, so the bush had to go. We still have one small fire bush here behind me, but that will probably likely go this spring as well. The bush used to be our, our talking point, or our uh, anytime there's a, oh, like in our Justin Bieber, uh, Drummer Boy song, or in a lot of our pentatonic songs, I'll make a prop, a sing to the, it fades in and out, and kind of acts, gives the illusion that it's talking, uh, and that bush was a talking point for us. We've since removed it. And the big rocket ship that you just saw, uh, the Dr. Pepper can is my name, or Dr. Pepper bottle, and that is now our talking point. But these are neat, these are handy. If you already have lights, um, the C brackets are about $1.50 each. Uh, the two by fours, whatever your local hardware, story is they used to be two dollars and i think inflation they're probably six or seven dollars a piece um and we just I, I spray painted these because uh there's no difference at all between what these look like at night if they're painted or unpainted but during the day this really makes them pop that's why i went with an rgb red green blue uh paint scale on them simply because when you're driving by it looks neat it's like oh, i want to come by and see that house later that has a neat visual look to it so that's what we did for uh, these. We use these constantly, kind of as piano keys. Um, I know like Tom Bet George probably has the most famous piano keys in any Christmas light show, but these kind of act as our piano keys and they also act as runners. Um, pretty neat, my favorite toy. All right, next we have our, next we have our photo cutout. Uh, pretty neat, this is one of our uh, most interactive options we have here. Uh, we have had this in the show for five or six years now. I do have a whole series about how to make this. Uh, most of that series is about prepping the wood and making certain this is as waterproof as possible. But this is just dang neat. If you're curious on how to build one of these, you're like, ah, I can't uh, do that myself. I don't have the uh, skill to do that. Don't worry about it because the trick here is, I didn't do this, I uh, actually have a, a painted, talented painter, but the one trick is that was suggested to us, like if you wanna make another one, you don't want to hire a painter. What you can do, or an artist, sorry, all of the artists. I know you don't like being called painters. If you don't want to hire an artist, simply uh, get whatever image you want, put that on a projector, and then put that projector onto whatever board you're going to draw on. Sorry, FedEx is coming. The trick here would be to project whatever image you want from a projector onto the board you want to draw on and trace the image and then kind of do a paint by the numbers scheme, if you will. So you too can make a photo prop simply by using a, an image that you want, project that onto your wood and then draw that out and then come back later and paint it. So this is oil painted uh, that we do about once every two years. Um, I will spray some UV resistance on here, uh, some you know, just some spray, some poly spray that kind of keeps the colors bright. But you can see even after six or seven years, however long we've had this, um, the colors are still bright and vibrant. So part of that is protecting your colors with a UV protectant and using oil-based paints. Uh, but yeah, kids love this. We have families that come up every year and say, hey, my kid was a, you know three years old when you first had this out and they're in fourth grade now or whatever. And uh, yeah, every year we come here, it's a family tradition. Every year we come here and get, our, get the kids' pictures taken of this. So we love, I love, it's my favorite part, uh, being part of people's family traditions that's 99 percent of the reason why i do this for folks uh we don't take donations we don't take fees it's just we just love doing it and this many folks have told us they made this their christmas card the family christmas card so that's just neat i love that so uh see next prop let's go talk about the treats all right time to talk about trees now i hang lights in this uh, uniquely two ways that probably you don't one is I have the lights um, 
all strung by nails. So I got tired many years ago of having to come down and get the lights just so. And for whatever reason in this tree, and mainly in this tree, squirrels love to eat my lights in this tree. Uh, in fact, I have some blues up here I need to fix later today after I get done talking to you folks. Uh, but to maintain straight lines in this tree, because it's so thick, I mean, it's so, got some girth there in the center, doesn't it? I don't want to go around and wrap lights. I'm going to waste a ton of lights on the back side of this tree uh, that the viewers can't see. It's going to cost me extra money by having those lights, having to own those lights. They're on the back of the house that people can't see. There's no real windows back here. It doesn't give us any enjoyment inside the house. So why in the world would I waste the money to do that? So I serpentine using wood screws all the way up in the tree. This only goes up, oh, probably 20 feet, 13 feet. I don't know. It goes up. But I do use wood screws in this tree. You may not want to. This is just an old river birch. What kind of tree is it? Oh, this is a sycamore. I forget. I'm not a tree guy. I'm not an arborist. I don't know what kind of tree this is. I used to know, but it's escaping me right now. Anyway, this tree is going to have to come down at some point in the next few years, according to the fella that takes care of our yard. This breaks all the time. So I don't really care about having this tree long term. Uh, so I don't mind using wood screws in it. It keeps my lines straight. And also we braid lights. Before I go show you my braids over here, let me show you the back side of this, just so you can see how convoluted it really is. Okay, you can see here, uh, these are all kind of color coded. One thing I highly recommend if you don't do that you start doing is to color code your lights. If you have lights that go bad up in this tree, you don't know where in the world it begins and starts. But if you color code the male and female ends of your Christmas light strings, you will. So I instantly know this is a red, this is blue, green, white. I can know it just by looking at the male and female ends. So if something goes wrong, like I need to do blues later. I know exactly how to find that particular blue uh, male and female end because it's gonna be color coded and I can give myself a visual clue. But you can see here, there are no lights here on the back side. I have the wood screws in here that hold the lights on there nice and tight for me. And I'm not wasting thousands of dollars of, of having Christmas lights back here that nobody's gonna see. We all do things in our show that are different from everyone else. One thing that I do differently that I actually started last year is I braid my lights. I hated that this tree would take a day to hang the reds and a day to hang the blues and a day to hang the greens and a day to, day to hang the whites and a day to hang the strobes and a day to hang the dripping tubes. I hated that, it's too much, it's too time consuming. I wanted to work you know, smarter rather than harder as they say. So I took a drill, I took an Allen wrench, and I took my reds, my greens, my blues, my whites, and I braided them. I braided all these lights. So when I hang a string, this is gonna be one string. This is one string, one string, one string, one string, because they're all braided. Uh, which is also a handy thing to do if your lights become untangled, and you're like, ah, this sucks. I don't like it. I liked it better when they're all twined and I could just put a string of lights up. You can fix those simply by using a drill and an Allen wrench. I think I have a short on how to do that. Save so much time. It's time efficient, it's awesome. So that is one thing I do differently here. I do use a few nails here just to keep my light rows um, nice and taut, uh, just in case they happen to slide down. Normally they don't, I don't have that problem in this tree. This is a uh, red maple. Um, that, how much I do know, you remember the name of this tree. But I have in this tree probably, <coughs> probably, I don't know, 20,000 lights, give or take. This is new to the show this year. This is a tune to sign, which the uh, lights, uh, you can use mini lights to just kind of go right through it. Pros and cons to this, um, if you've ever used like a, well, we'll talk about my snowflakes here in a second. The lights that go into those snowflakes, they don't move. This, the lights have come out many different places, uh, all lit up, it still looks fine, even though there's, it's missing some lights. Just It's just so hard to get them push into and stay. So. Why well, I'd recommend this sign, um, it's not as efficient as it could be, simply because the lights are easily pushed in and out and it's a pain in the butt to get perfect because it's so convoluted and so packed and so busy on the back side of this. You can see here just exactly how busy this thing is. I mean, it's hard to find a single light that uh, from, like there's a light missing on this side, to actually push them through. These things just come in and out so easily, which is one thing I don't like about them. Um, so no glow caps or something I started using this year. Um, boom, it just hides the light. They're pretty dang handy. Um, 
I actually recommend these instead of duct taping something or hiding a light you don't need or cutting it off and heat sealing it just use uh, no glow caps they hide the light probably about 99.9% .9 of the light that comes through those those are just kind of stay on the ground but this uh, tune to sign is brand new this year um, gives the folks in the cars an easy way to see exactly what radio station they need to turn into now to talk about my brand new snowflakes these are Boscoyo brand coral snowflakes they're 24 inches by 24 inches I did a video about these when I first got them I actually actually have changed a few things since that videos come out whereas I was complaining and I still a valid complaint in my mind that the 100 count of strings are is the uh, number one selling string of Christmas lights 100 count go to any store and get a hundred count uh, these take 70 I did go out and buy uh, designer 70 count strings to put into these in the review video that I made for them I taped the duct, uh, duct tape lights to cover the the extra 30 lights I've since gone to the no go clap no glow caps which are much more efficient and just look better but the snowflakes are neat when they when they when the light snaps in it snaps in it is a pain in the butt to get the light out should you ever need to I like that about it because they're not going to go anywhere it's going to give a uniform look and these things are very easy prop to store this is where my verticals used to be I used to have 12 verticals over here and 12 over there on the other side of the home so I've done RG RBG red blue green red I have painted the two by fours that these are attached to they are uh, attached to the house with C clamps uh, custom cut to the exact uh, length of the uh, ground and I you can see they're all uniformed across all uniformed across and each row or each column depending on which way my wife told me I had to address it I forget which but anyway they're all they're all uniform and they act kind of as a neat little matrix during the show uh, I'm really happy with with these and how I built them I've never seen anyone build them quite like I have here they're zip tied onto the back of the uh, 2x4 and each 2x4 of course is painted we just talked about that but they're really really neat and they're really eye-catching and I'm getting a lot of compliments about them this year from the folks that have been stopping and watching the show and having a chit chat with me uh, so if you have not looked into doing this type of matrix a snowflake matrix it looks neat I recommend you do it for your show it's pretty inexpensive especially if you do the pre-order sales which are getting ready to come up that airplane flew over had a pause for a minute sorry about that all right here you can see that they are just zip tied on zip tied on and what I did is I put the zip tie through the coro comes around the other side and just zip tied on to the um, 2 by 4 here some are tighter than others of course and just gives a solid way for the lights to stay in place you can see on the back here exactly how, how tight they are that looks like a huge hole in the back and then just real nice and tight up front See, they're all just zip tied and the trick is to hang them where you can put the zip tie through the coral prop keeps it the tightest on there all right next we have the what i call peacocks my wife calls these fingers uh, i call them peacocks just because i think that they they look, resemble peacocks uh, but these are something i have that kind of acts as a fan kind of acts as a windmill if you will during the show it'll be animated where it's going back and forth pretty neat again just painted two by fours that have lights wrapped around them and it is held on the back with some c-clamps each one has i think only 200 lights which at night that's more than enough to have 200 lights on these bad boys you can see up above that i also have uh props up on the roof so let's go up on the roof real quick and i'll show you what we have going on up there there are a few unique things that you might be interested in For years, I've only let Patreon supporters know about this secret device right here. Uh, it's a staircase, folks. It's a portable staircase. This is on wheels. I got tired of climbing ladders, and I know, I'm smart enough to know that at some point I'm going to fall off a ladder. It's going to happen. But nope, my wife, who is a much more handy and much more crafty person than I am, built me a strong and sturdy portable staircase that I go right up and down my stairs all the time. I'm up on the roof so often that this is just a huge lifesaver.
All right, we got the back side of one of my peacocks up here. Obviously, it's unpainted on the back side. That gives a vibrant color on the back side uh, or on the front side towards the audience. But on the back here, it's just not painted, and that's fine. 200 lights uh, strung each. You can see the color duct tape there. They are color coordinated. That way, it lets me know which of these lights is which if I need to see it at night. Nice and easy if there, something's broken. There's the other set. They are linked together to save channels. The left green will be the same as this left green. The right green will be the same as that right green. The two center blues are the same. Uh, the left red will attach to the left red over here. The right red will attach to the right red over here. And they are linked down to the one down below by extension cords. We do make our own extension cords. So that's what you see these on the ground. Uh, if you don't make your own extension cord, folks, look into how I do it. It saved me so much more money. Pretty neat, pretty neat. This is the front of them. Uh, again, I have just color coordinated the tape here. Uh, I know these are going to be green, but for whatever reason, I need to use this string on a different prop many years from now. It's already got the tape on there, and I'm a big believer in that. Uh, but this is just, well, this is the case. It's fence post underneath where you're at, two two by fours, and a fence post over here for the legs. This just gives it nice and uh, some good width for a long, strong base. Kind of like if you're taking a fighting stance or something, you want a nice, strong base with your legs. The same is true for uh, props for Christmas lights, especially on the roof. A long, strong base means the wind's not going to get to them. Problem solved there. But these are dang handy. They're, they're, they are attached to the fillers downstairs, so they will mirror one, in, one another. In total, we use one, two, three, four, five, only five channels for all three of these props because they are connected. All right, to show you what I did here, I have a couple C-clamps that are just mounted here. In fact, I think, yeah, this one, I ran out of my C-clamps, so I have two clamps. I don't have a front-facing. The one downstairs actually has uh, a, a true C-clamp that's built into it, but this is, these are just brackets um, here to kind of keep the wood in place. It's simply screwed on there nice and easy with three screws and I have a screw on each side and a uh, screw down here that keeps this in place. I couldn't quite find a bracket that works well to keep uh, these two green 45 degree angles at a 45 degree angle. So I just jerry-rigged it with uh, some, some screws and it does the job just fine. At some point in time, you can see the dry rot's starting to set in because I didn't paint these. When I rebuild these, whenever that time comes, I will paint the back to save it from this dry rot because paint does help seal the wood. Next is my star. This is a fabricated uh, sheet metal that uh, was made specifically for me by uh, the House of Sharp Metal Fabrications here in town. Uh, this is built, originally I built this for C6 uh, lights and I intentionally built it with a teardrop down. So I put the light in and teardrop it down to lock it into place. However, uh, when I started going with my C9s first, I realized that the C9s screw in perfectly and I don't need the drop down. They do have this on file. Uh, so if you folks are in the Wichita, Kansas area and you ever want uh, this exact thing built, they have the uh, uh, file already made and it's nothing to recreate it. I believe, I don't remember. I've had this for about 10 years. I think I paid 300 for this, but I don't remember it's been so long. Uh, so you can see some rust starting to show on the back. This is also a custom built frame. Uh, so if I move later in time and I have a different pitch on my roof, this can match that pitch by going up and down as I need it to. It also lays down flat. I'm not going to do that right now because it does have lights on it and I don't want to screw the lights up. I also have magnetic clips in here for my strobe lights. These are commercial grade strobe lights from Creative Displays. Um, I'm a huge fan of Creative Displays. In my I don't know, 10, 12 years, I've been buying products from them. I think I have two of my SMM LEDs, two individual diodes that have gone out. Everything else is still working 10 years later. So I appreciate the heck out of commercial grade lights. And folks, there is a huge difference between commercial grade and retail grade. Retail grade or residential grade, only designed to last one to three years, folks. 2,000 hours is what most lights are rated at. Commercial grade lights, you're talking 50,000 hours, 100,000 hours, so there is more bang for your buck, even though they are a lot more expensive. I want to say, but I'm not positive, I have to double check and I don't have it off the top of my head. I want to say I pay $30 per individual strobe string, which sounds a ton of money for one light. I've been using it for a decade, so 
you get what you pay for type of thing. But this star is neat. At one point in time, I was going to buy a whole row of these. But to buy 10 is 3000 I'm not going to spend $3,000 on one prop. I'd rather much rather spend that money somewhere else. Um, but yeah, but this is my store. It's uh, I got some sandbags here down at the bottom to ensure that they uh, are going to stay in place. We talked earlier about a nice strong base to keep things from flying off the roof. I can't do that with this, or it's not designed in that manner. So instead, every year I just go and get me a couple of 60-pound sandbags to keep it up here on the roof. So I just did an experiment a few videos back, uh, or I released the video rather, uh, about what happens when you leave Christmas light um, clips on on your roof all year round. Uh, no spoilers, you can watch that video if you want to kind of see how that experiment went. But I left uh, these same, same style clips out on my roof for an entire year. Well, one year and three days to be exact. <coughs> uh, and that experiment was a success in proving a point one way or the other. I'll let you find out for yourselves. But I do use one clip for every individual ball because we are an animated Christmas light show. Uh, each uh, string has to come on and off and that intensity at a certain level all the time. So I do use individual reds and then I use strings of blue, strings of white, strings of green. We do a four color channel here, which is why you see these up on the roof. Uh, not too hard to hang these. Uh, I can get the whole roof done, well, and many lights. We do have many strobes strung up here, so there are five lights. I take that back, five lights attached up here. Uh, it takes me probably three days to get everything nice and tidy, uh, looking precision in line. So, but yeah, we use just standard uh, Hallmarks, Hallmark, not a real word, Walmart holiday time brands. Uh, lights just because they're, they're easy to get. I can get it in and out. Um, one day a company might come to me and say, Charlie, we want you to use these these hooks, these clips for your show. Here's here's some clips for free. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll switch, but for now, these work just fine for me. Um, and they are readily available. So they're not, not terribly expensive. So they work for my needs. Mentioned earlier about my bright green extension cords. Those are the original cords from our first show. And we had to bust them out this year because we added so many channels so quickly. Uh, we ran out of homemade extension cords. You can see here what they look like versus over there. You can't see any of them over here. Those are all homemade extension cords. You can see the one bright green one, but the dark green ones are hard to tell, which is why it is a huge advantage for us to make our own extension cords. They blend right into the grass. You can't see them. It just makes for a better looking show, in my opinion, versus the gaudy dark green ones. You can see horrible green extension cord river versus you can't even tell they're really there so that's one other advantage of using homemade extension cords which is simply just taking old broken strings that no longer work and instead of throwing them in the trash or saving them just for extra bulbs you use them for extension cords all right let's take a look at uh what makes the show possible so these are our control boards we have uh four uh 40 channel boxes that uh, shout out to Richard from Revival Control Systems. He's kind of semi-retired. Uh, he came out of semi-retirement this year and helped us uh, get two new boxes this year. So these control uh, 40 channels each and we have an extension cord that is plugged into each and every uh, channel. Uh, these run for about $500 a piece. The reason why we went with Revival Control which use, uses the Prism software versus Laterama or some of the others. It's simply price per channel. Uh, 40 channels for his price point is actually cheaper than Laterama's, which is about 350 for a 16 channel uh, box. You simply get more bang for a buck. There are pros and cons though. Uh, the biggest con would be that uh, Laterama x lights. Well, the software might work with this, these are dumb, but this is a dumb channel box. I can't use smart lights with this, or I can't use um, pixel lights with this, because this is a dumb box. It can't do smart. Uh, X lights, Laterama, they are designed for uh, smart pixels and for strings both. And you can run, you can certainly run uh, strings off of X lights software, but for the hardware, it's not really compatible. So the biggest drawback is, uh, I can't use any other software really with this box. So where I, it's a huge benefit and a big pro 
uh, price per channel, I lose a little bit in that there aren't very many of us in the country that use revival control systems and the prison software. So if I ever run across a problem, luckily Richard is kind enough to answer the phone for us every time. Uh, it's very rare you get an owner of a company that will talk to the customer. So he's very great about it. He's uh, spent time where uh, we'll just call him up and say, hey, Richard, help, you know, this is the problem we have. So these are brand new. This is the first season with them. Uh, their brothers over here behind me look exactly like this. And those are 10 years old, nine years old, 10 years old. Uh, through that time we've had them, we've had one channel go bad. Um, Another con is the software doesn't get updated very often. So like I said, Richard's semi-retired. He did write the, the software for it, I believe. Um, and there's really no updates to those. So pros and cons. The biggest pro is that we, we know the brand. We know it's sturdy. We know it's going to last us forever. Um, and the owner answers the phone when we call, which is a big pro. Price per uh, channel is awesome. Cons are the kind of what I just mentioned. So we uh, have the uh, boxes here. Um, and just a, a Tupperware, or forget who makes it, Rubbermaid. Rubbermaid uh, cabinet here shelters them from any type of uh, weather. Um, and then the cords go out through the fence here, which I'll take you around and show you and uh, recap the video there. Uh, but yeah, this is what the boxes look like. Uh, so each channel, uh, each, each box has three uh, male outlets, which have their own power here the red cords and then each channel needs its own cord so you do have to buy a bunch of cords cut them up and uh, wire them into each channel it's actually a lot easier than what I'm making it sound um, but yeah, you know, and shout out to uh, Darren another one of our patreon supporters Darren who is also our electrician and comes over each and every year and gives power to these bad boys so shout out to Darren for uh, without him we don't have a show so uh, Appreciate all of my Patreon supporters, especially Darren. He is uh, he is just a he's a king amongst king. He is a man amongst boys. He is, he's an awesome fella. We appreciate the hell out of him. And that brings us to the end of the tour where I'm going to show you this gaudy mess. Uh, so another thing about having these bright green extension cords that catches everybody's eye is they it looks horrible underneath here. So I actually had to take a tarp and cover them because uh, I've had people stop and say, do you have that problem every year with your cords? No, we don't because we ran out of homemade extension cords and we had to use our backups. So we have each green and we have 40 of them. Each one is between 100 or 120 feet. Uh, carries out power nicely. The 120 feet ones, we do have a bit of a problem with, with fading the props properly. One of the snowflakes, a red, is on 120 foot, uh, green cord and it won't fade at all and that just sucks because it kind of ruins a special moment in one of the songs because it doesn't fade properly um, but I have the fence post taken out right here the bottom's still on here so our dogs do not get out uh, but this is just a way for the power cords to come out uh, a lot of your pixel light shows will have you'll see Tupperware totes uh, Tupperware keep saying Tupperware Rubbermaid totes in the yard and they're covered up uh, the control boxes because the control boxes are actually in the yards in many shows. Ours are all in the backyard and the extension cord comes out to the individual props which is not a problem when our dark green homemade extension cords are out there and nobody's really paying attention to them because you don't really notice them. The bright greens they do. So uh, this summer we will be hitting uh, garage sales hard, hitting estate sales hard and buying people's old incandescent Christmas strings and turning them into extension cords. It saves us so much money and they're already outdoor rated so it works out great. But this is where the power from the box goes out and runs the muck into their own individual channels. Shout out to my Patreon family supporters. Shout out to my Patreon family. Only with your support does this show happen. Uh, you can check us out on patreon.com. Type in Christmas on Crestline and support the show for as little as $3 a month. You can also join here on YouTube and be a member by hitting and clicking that join button. But my Patreon family supporters, thank you so much, including Mike and Stacy from MS Lights that sent me this video of their Christmas light show this year. They are an award 
winning show and this year to open up their show they had a uh, chocolate hot chocolate area they had a churro area they had all the people out they have a snow blowing machine uh, i believe if memory serves and hopefully mike and stacy will correct me if i'm wrong i believe they won their individual category for Lightorama in uh, 2021 as the best in show for that specific category so bravo to mike and stacy and because mike and stacy sent, sent us in the video they are now entered into this year's fan appreciation awards of which our patreon family is the sole judge on so if you want to be a judge in this year's contest look us up on patreon.com and join the family and say hi to everybody we're on discord chatting every day so if you're someone who hey i want to know i want to be a part of when sales are going on or where a new prop builds going on join us on discord we're talking there every single day and having a great time and speaking of our Patreon family, shout out to Chase Young. Chase Young came on the show as a $10 a month supporter. And when you come on as a $10 a month supporter, you get your name shouted out. Chase Young! Chase Young is our newest Patreon family member. He is now a voting member for this year's Fan Appreciation Award. So Chase, it's great to have you on board. Here soon, your name will be at the end credits of every single one of our shows as are all of our Patreon supporters. Uh, and you also get your own link to uh, uh, our Patreon only chat and Discord. So thank you so much for taking the tour with me this year. Thanks to Mike and Stacy for sending in the video. Thanks to Chase for being a new Patreon supporter. Let me know down in the comments what prop you like best, what questions you have, and uh, subscribe to the channel and join us with next year. We already have booked Spoiler alert for next year's Christmas in July extravaganza. We already have the great Christmas light fight coming back on for another year for the show. That's about it for me today, guys. I'm Charlie. I'll see you in the next video. And there's a car going by. Almost had that done without a car driving by at the end. And now she's doing a U-turn. I don't know why. <laughs>